everybody, welcome to the Law Doc Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a game school video. About three years ago, about this time of year here on my YouTube channel, I did an entire game school series breaking down some of our favorite games that we had on hand for that age by subject. And so that is what I'm going to do again for you guys this year. I'm going to break down what's on our game shelf by subject. We're going to do a series. It's going to last this entire week. So if you're watching today, it's the day one and you're definitely going to want to come back the rest of the week to check out all the other subjects. Today's subject is going to be math because I feel like math is the subject that we all struggle with the most making fun. And it's the one thing we always want to make sure we're getting in. So I wanted to kick off this game school series with that subject. So I'm going to share all of the games off of our game shelf that we kind of come back to and play the most. And so again, Emily is 10 for all intents and purposes, fifth grade. So what I'm going to be showing you is essentially what we're currently still using, um, or just haven't parted with yet. If so, if you have younger kids and you're like, Oh, I love this idea. I'm going to link in the description box, the series that I did three years ago, because if you have younger kids, you're going to want to watch those. Cause that's what we would have been doing when she was like six, seven, um, kindergarten, first grade. All right, let's just go ahead and jump in. Cause I'm surrounded by math games. So these are in no particular order. I'm just sharing whatever happened to grab. All right. The first one I have here is telling time by Eboo. This is honestly a game that Emily has probably outgrown skill wise, but we still love playing it. Um, and I think it's, you know, fun anyway, it is basically just matching these little clocks up to these different times. So matching the analog to the digital. And what's so great about it is there's multiple levels. So you can play just time to the hour or time to the half hour or time to the 15, the five or the minute. So depending on where your kids is, kids are at academically or what they're learning at the time, you can pull just those cards and play with just that. So this is one of those games that's going to grow with you. Next we have math sprint which is the mental math game. Now, what I like about this game is that it includes all four operations, which is not really easy to find in a lot of games. I look really hard for those. So I'm going to make sure I point those out because I feel like we tend to get our kids to maybe let's say multiplication or division, and then we still need to be brushing up on addition and subtraction. But a lot of times Emily had outgrown the games that focus solely on addition and subtraction. So games that included all four operations are ones that I seek out and try really hard to make sure they're in our game school library. And this is one of those. It is basically this sprint race and you are using your mental math to win. We have the classic edition of payday. I just think this is such a fun way um, to do some money math. It is a calendar and you're playing based off of what's going on, repair bills, doctor bills. Um, there's all kinds of things, family casino nights, you found a buyer for something. It reminds me slightly of a more real life version of Monopoly, um, but not quite as long to play. So there's that one. Next, we have one of my favorites that I'm not sure I'll ever part with, and it is money bags. This is seven plus, I really think with a little bit of guidance, younger kids could play it. Emily has most definitely probably outgrown this now at 10, fifth grade skill wise, because she definitely hasn't mastered, but it's still one that we enjoy playing because we like the game itself, which I absolutely love those because if you have younger kids, that means that your older kids aren't going to mind playing with them. Um, it is basically a game where you are trying to collect the most money, but it is coin based rather than bill based. So I find a lot of the math games on the market, like payday, monopoly, et cetera, use bills where this is mostly coin based and it's U S coin. So if you're not in the U S I don't know if they make other versions of this, but it's probably not going to be beneficial to you because you're using pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, um, and what's really, really cool about it is that you spin a spinner and it'll say you have to get that amount minus nickels or minus dimes. Like you can't use nickels or dimes. So it forces kids to collect different amounts and not be stuck in like 50 cents means two quarters. Well, but 50 cents can also mean five dimes. So if they have to collect 50 cents without quarters, it makes them kind of think outside the box a little bit. So I really, really love that. All right, next we have one of Emily's favorites and that is 
Prime Climb. Now this is another one where technically you can use all four operations. I don't find that you actually use all four as much as you think. Um, addition and multiplication are used much more because subtraction and division would take you backwards in the game, not necessarily forwards, although sometimes going backwards to go forwards is beneficial. So this does technically use all four operations, but I find addition and multiplication are used a lot more, at least when we play, but you as the player get to choose which um, operation you're going to use. But it is a really fun game. There is so much to learn within it and it's colorful. Um, we really love that one. It gets played a lot. Like even Kevin loves it and he doesn't always love educational games. Next up, we have the allowance game. This one reminds me, it's a similar version of payday, but versus payday where that is more, um, maybe adult scenarios, like you're getting paid and these are things you have to do in life, like paying bills and having things repaired. Allowance is a little more kid version. So you have to be the first to save $20. So for example, you forgot your homework, so you lose a turn, or you babysat and earn $3.50. So it's just a little bit more maybe relatable to kids versus, you know, maybe the fact that they're like a light bill. What is that? So this one, um, an overdue library book is one of the ways that they would spend money. So maybe a little bit more relatable, but still equally as fun. Next, we have Buy It Right which is a shopping game. Now this one has bills and coins and you get a calculator, which is always a lot of fun, but it's coins, bills, calculators, and you're shopping. So you have to buy up to two items. You find some money, you give a gift to a friend, you get a coupon two for one. So again, I think this is a lot of real life, but also still relatable for kids because it kind of brings it down to their level. You lose some money. Um, it's just, a really fun real life way to kind of train kids how to shop, um, how to save money because it talks about coupons. So I really like that. Next, I have the game 24. Now I have single digits and double digits. Um, it's such a silly, simple game. Like it's so simple. It's mostly a one player game. So basically, here, let me get a card out to make this easier. You have a card and the goal is to use the digits on the card and make some sort of addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division problem using all four numbers that you see, but each number only once and coming up with the answer of 24. So it's one of those really fun, quick mental math. A lot of times we will... I said single player. It doesn't have to be single player, but we will race each other. We'll like each get a card and see who can come up with their card first or um, put one on the table and whoever gets the answer gets to keep it. We play multiple different ways, but I really like those to kind of warm up your math brain. Next, I have Blobby's Pizza. This one is a lot of fun. You get a guest checks book. You're creating whole pizzas out of pizza fractions. Um, it's a lot of fun. You get cute little pencils. And like I said, you get this cute little guest checkbook to go with the theme. So it makes it a lot of fun. Definitely one of the more fun fraction games. Although I have quite a few of those. So let's go ahead and finish the stack I have of fraction games. We have Fracto, which is a card game. You get to be the winner of the jungle if you win. Um, froggy fractions. There are multiple different ways to play this game. I think, let's see if it tells me how many different ways. Um, nine different games that you can play and they have the directions in here for all nine of them. Some start very simple. Um, five of those nine are more advanced. Uh, fraction war, super simple. It's just the fraction cards. What I like about them though is that it has the shading on the top of what that fraction looks like. So you have the visual, visual representation of it. Um, I really, really like it when we have equivalent fractions that come up because even before Emily knew what equivalent fractions were, she could obviously see that three sixths and one half were the same at the top of the fraction. So that was a fun way to start familiarizing her with some more advanced concepts without us actually teaching them yet. Um, I have another money game here. This is Quick Picks. I love all of the Quick Picks game. Um, this is a money game though. 
It's a fun, quick game where it kind of reminds me of Spot It. You have cards laid out and then you're trying to, like in this example, you would have the card with the money laid out and then you would have for everybody and then everybody would have different amounts and whoever could find an amount that matched the coins first would be able to keep that card. The person with the most cards wins. All right, so we're moving to the other stack now. We have Outnumbered, which is a super fun, superhero based game. Um, and it, let's see, combined forces to thwart evil and outnumbered and probable heroes, a math based cooperative strategy game, which we love cooperative games. And so this one is a lot of fun. I don't remember, I'm looking now, I don't remember if you use. I feel like this one uses multiple operations, but I don't remember which ones. Oh, let's see if I can. No. I know it uses multiple operations, but I don't remember which operations that it uses off the top of my head. We haven't played it in a few months. Um, sequence numbers. If you like the sequence games, this is a great math version of that. This one's really old. I bought this from a thrift store. Um, basically you get the board, Let's see if I can do this without making a ton of noise and it just has numbers on it. And then each player is going to draw a card and the cards have a math problem. They're either addition or subtraction and they go from single to double digit. So you have, for example, like this, but then also like that. And then you just put your little bingo chip or your sequence chip on the answer to your card. And then whoever gets a sequence, which is four or five, let's see, five chips in a row um, is the winner. Dice of Fury. This is basically the new version of Even Stevens Odd was a game um, by Educational Resources that, I'm sorry, Educational Insights. This is essentially the exact same game. Um, it still has like the little dice man that you collect. I'm not going to be able to get him out of here for you guys. There we go. It still has like the little dice guy that you collect and it has the different things that you're going for. So if you're not familiar with that, everybody gets one of these little dice placement tiles and you get a set of die in your color. So everybody gets a different color. And then you have a stack of cards and you pull a card and everybody rolls until they get whatever is on that card. So like this one says, all dice are odd and add up to more than 25. Um, a total of colored dice is more than total of white dice because while you have your colors, you end up with three white dice with purple dots or pink dots or green dots or blue and three purple dots with white dots, three purple dies with white dots. So they're reversed. So you have three and three when you're playing. So it's a fun way to basically really, really fast roll the dice and practice evens and odds and additions and subtractions and multiplications because all of the cards have different things in them. When Emily was younger and we had the first version, which was even Stephen odd, I would go through the cards in here and I would pull cards that I knew that she could do. So, um, alls were ones or just evens or odds. I didn't get ones where like the total number were 25 because when we first started playing and she was four years old, she couldn't have added to 25 quickly like I can. And that would have been unfair. So that's another way if you get this and you have younger kids to make it a little bit easier for them is to pull the cards beforehand that you know they can handle and only play those cards that are simpler for them. Pizza Fraction Fun. This is a fraction game that we have had for forever. It has seven different games in it and they are actual little slices of pizza which just makes it super cute. So it's just a fun way to play with fractions first. We did this as a, just like a restaurant game way before anything else. She was just playing pizzas. Um, and then later on to play the games that were actually listed in here, which was a blast. Next, this one's gonna be loud, you guys, sorry. We have Fraction Formula. 
This is one of my favorites to play because it's just so cute. It's got a lot of pieces. You have these little beakers and you put the fraction pieces in it based off of what cards that you, based off of what cards you draw. And you try to not go over as you're doing that so you can decide which ones to put in there. But it's just a lot of fun because you have all these little fraction formula pieces and they, you put them in the beaker. I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's just unique um, and different than anything else that we have. And so I really enjoy that. It's not, you know, dice or cards. It's a beaker. <laughs> and it's just really different. Um, next, I have Target, which is another one of those games I told you I would tell you about because it does all four operations. It's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing to hit your target. So you basically have target numbers out kind of on the table. I'm not going to be able to get them out. Let's just do it this way. You basically have a target number out on the table, which is the black card that you're seeing there. And then everybody has the white cards in their hands. And so you're trying to do something with the cards in your hand to hit the target number that's on the table. And obviously the person who collects the most targets wins. There's probably other ways. There are, there are three more ways to play in addition to just that one. That's the only way we've played so far. Um, but we still really like it. And like I said, finding games that do all four operations is not the easiest. So absolutely love that. I say that, but here's one more. Um, Ads Monday, which I'm sure I'm not saying that right. Ads Monday. Anyway, it stands for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and that is exactly what you're doing. You have cards and you are trying to use the numbers on the outside to come up with the number on the inside. What's really cool about these cards is there are, you can see here's a one star versus a three star. So there's varying different levels. Um, Emily and I can play simultaneously with her playing on an easier level and me playing on a harder level, which... There are very few games that you can do that with, especially with ver with multiple different operations. So that is probably the most played math game currently in our homeschool, I would say. I will give you a roundup of which ones are the most played at the end, though. Um, Dragon Times, which has always been a fun multiplication game, especially if you have a kid like mine who is obsessed with dragons. Um, it's just card game, but it's a lot of fun because you were doing all these different things to capture the dragons with all of the different cards. If you have a dragon lover who needs to learn the multiplication tables, this is definitely the way to do it. Um, sub shop, we've had this forever and it's on the math shelf because you actually do have to like take orders and add and subtract their, um, their totals and whoever gets the most money wins. And you have tipping and all kind of stuff. But if we're being honest, it's one of Emily's favorite games simply because it has a bell. You ring the bell after you've made the sub. And then you get to collect the money. And that makes it her favorite game because she loves those little bells. All right. We have three games here. And they are all by Logic Roots. These are only the three that we have left from them. The three that we have left that we are still playing through and honestly... I could probably purge some of these, um, are the monster sock factory, which is a really great way to get started with multiplication because it's multiplication as repeated addition and division as repeated subtraction. This is multiplication tables one through nine. And then we have say cheese cafe, which is multiplication tables two through 10. And then we have big catch which is division with one number, division without remainder, and division as repeated subtraction. Now, these are the three that we have left, but if you have younger kids or kids that need to work on the other um, operations, we loved Ocean Raiders, which is their addition, um, cloud hop, mountain hoppers, something cl with clouds, cloud hoppers, mountain raiders, ocean raiders. I don't know there, but all of the logic group games we've tried, I think every one of them up to this point, and we have enjoyed all of them. There's not been any that I have disliked. And now we are on to the briefcase of math games. So I'm not going to have boxes for these to show you guys, but there will be links in the description. So it will be fine. Okay, math dominoes. We have 
addition, subtraction, place value, time, shape, multiplication, and fractions. Did I say all of them? I think so. And they are simple. They all play just like dominoes. Addition obviously has the sum, and then you're trying to match it to the math problem. The same thing with subtraction, multiplication, and division. Um, place value shows some kind of representation. Let's see if I can show you a few of them of what the place value would look like. So there's three or four different representations of that. And then they have numbers on the other side. So you would be matching the representation of the number to the actual number when you play dominoes. The time have the analog and the digital time on them. Um, they have to the hour, to the 30 minutes, to the half hour, and to the 15 minutes it looks like. I'm not seeing to the five, but that doesn't mean it's not in there because I'm looking at these rather fast. Um, and then fraction, sorry, is some sort of representation of the fraction, typically based off of a picture or a pie, such as that one. And then they have either the number or the words as the other side. The reason I love these so much is because once we knew how to play dominoes, I didn't have to learn how to play a new game to be able to cover all of these different concepts in our homeschool, which was a plus because when you have this many games, having to review the rules every time can sometimes become a pain. So I like having all of those on hand because I can go, oh, you know what, we need to brush up on place value and I, it's an easy one to pull because I don't have to learn a new game or remind myself how to play a game. So there are those. Um, here's another Logic Roots game. It is the Monkey Fractions. It's a little bit similar to the Froggy Fractions. But you have these little dry erase, I say boards, it's kind of like a dry erase card thick card to help you with the fraction. This is your logic slate is what they call it. So, and then it comes with little markers too. So that's a great way to get the kids to play a fraction game where they are um, having to, you know, write down the fraction and talk about numerator and denominator. It's a lot of fun as well. Let's see, next we have Proof, which is a fun math card game. It's a fast-paced mental card game. Um, it, let's see, is multiple operations. I believe you can do all operations with it. Let me see in here really quick. Basically, you're using the cards that are laid out to form some kind of mental math problem. So yes, you can use addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, and square roots are all allowed. I knew that there was something else with that one. So that is one that does all of those operations that we talked about. Quicks is another fun one. It's similar to Yahtzee in the fact that you are rolling dice and then you are using this score pad to keep your score. Um, it is a lot of fun. This score pad has you doing more addition. I have seen where people have made um, ones that you can print to do like multiplication if you're focusing solely on multiplication. So that makes it a little bit um, more challenging for older kids. And then we have, let's see, I think I have more than this, but these are the two that I have in here by the Tang Math Company. They have like a junior and a senior math game kit. Um, I have owned both of them over the years. They're quick paced card games that are perfect for math facts and math concepts. So this one is Noom Tango, which is picking any two cards from the set and putting them aside. Between the two cards, there's only one match. So a similar version of Spot It. This is the junior version. I thought I had the senior one in here. 
but the junior version is just the numbers like the hand three to the word three to the number three the senior one is a little more advanced than that and then kakuma is on any card you have to find the number that is the product of two of the others on the card so you have a card that has let's see i think there's nine yes so there's nine on there and you have to find the two that make a product of another one so they're very fast paced mental math spot it type of games find it fast type of games which are things that we really enjoy in our homeschool if you don't like to find it fast um, spot it types of things you may not enjoy a lot of those because that's how a lot of them are based but we really do. Um, and then we have the Math Rush. There are Math Rush 1, 2, and 3. Math Rush 1 is addition and subtraction. Math Rush 2, I believe, is multiplication and exponents. And Math Rush 3 is fractions and decimals. All three of them have the same type of gameplay. So much like the dominoes, once you've learned how to play, you can just keep playing them. So if you're homeschooling, multiple kids with different levels it would be a great one for you to add because you could play like one with your younger kids two with maybe your medium age kids and three with your older kids and once you've learned the gameplay you don't have to learn it again because you already know it um we have the clumsy thief and clumsy thief junior games these were a lot of fun clumsy thief junior i believe is mostly single digit edition where clumsy thief the original is du yeah double digit edition because you're cards are like you know go up to 20 basically it's a really really fun candy shop for one the junior version is oh with a raccoon that's right it's like a picnic version they're both a fun way to sneak in some extra math let's see here we have exact change which is another way to practice um, coins it reminds me kind of of Uno. You have the coin, the value, and the color on each card. And so that is what you're doing is laying down something that matches the previous card based off of that. But it's a great way to get familiar with the amounts and what the coins look like. Um, by the same company as Exact Change, we have Perfect Timing. So you end up with like your card that tells you the time and then you're slowly picking up move the clock cards and then you have to move it. So like move the clock 10 minutes from there. Here you would move it 45 minutes and your time card can change. So you're constantly changing the time, adding time, sometimes subtracting time on your little clock. And then we have addition and subtraction and then multiplication war. So the addition and subtraction has addition or subtraction problems on it. And you know, each of you would lay it down and whoever has the largest number. Um, you don't have to have the actual game for the addition or the subtraction or even the multiplication. I liked it because it was simple and it was something to pull off the shelf to remind me that we needed to do it. But you could easily just use a deck of cards. So if you have a deck of cards, you would flip two cards over each instead of one and you would add them for addition, subtract them for subtraction, multiply them for multiplication. Um, it's essentially the exact same thing and just using a simple deck of cards that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Like I said, I just liked having those on hand because it was an easy way to be like, oh yeah, that's a game we can play. I don't do well with trying to remember all of the games that you can play with like just a deck of cards or some random dice. But if you don't want to own a bunch of stuff, that is a great alternative. My last two are by the same company and we absolutely love them. This one is set. You have all of the cards out on the table and you are trying to find a set because they're all basically similar or because everyone is completely different based off of color, shape, and the coloring, like the design within the shape. And then by the same makers of set, this is a newer one that we have fallen in love with and it is called Zangle and it is shape and angles. So you're trying to find the angle or the shape that would fit into another one most of the time. It is a lot of fun. 
Okay, so that is all of our top most played math games off of our game shelf. Um, I would love it if you would tell me what are the top most played math games in your homeschool down in the comments because, well, I'm always looking to add to our collection. But I did promise you that I would show you or tell you what our top five are. So that's what I'm going to do now. Our top five would be Ads Monday. Prime Climb, Fraction War, Target, and Outnumbered. That is our current top five, the five most played games in our homeschool currently.